Today I'm going to work on making an Adirondack chair. A few things before I get started. Uh, first of all, this is not really a how-to video. This is more of a how I'm doing it video. I'm not a carpenter by any means. Uh, there's probably better ways to do this than what I'm going to do, um, but I'm just going to kind of document what I do as I go along and see what happens. The plans that I'm going to work from come from this book that I've had for quite a while. Uh, outdoor 2x4 furniture, although as you may have noticed already I'm not strictly using 2x4s. Here's a look at what the finished product should look like. And here's another look at it from the front. The first page of the plans explains some special tools and techniques that may be needed, materials and supplies for one chair, which I'm only going to be building one, I'm not going to build both just yet. Here's the hardware that will be needed to put the thing together and here is the cutting list of all the individual pieces. So as you can see here, I've got enough wood and hardware to build one chair. I'll have a little bit of wood left over that I can use on the next one when I get around to building it. What I'm going to do now is cut all of these different boards to length as shown in this chart. In order to make all of the cuts, I'll be using my DeWalt 10 inch miter saw. You can see here I've got it set up on sort of a portable table so I can move it around as needed. And over there under the board, I've also got a rolling stock support. I'm a big fan of these Papermate Sharp Writer pencils, and I use these for a lot of things, including woodworking. The nice thing about these that most people don't realize is that they are spring-loaded on the end, so they actually work real well for marking wood, uh, even rough wood, and the, the lead won't break on, on these. And these are relatively inexpensive. You can get these pretty much anywhere uh, real cheap. So I always keep some of these around, and like I said, I use them for a lot of things. I've got all of the boards cut to length and stacked up, and you may notice that I've got letters on the ends of each board and those correspond to the letters that are in the cutting chart in the book. Now that I've got all of the boards cut to length and marked as to which one is which, I can get started with step one. And you can see here that step one involves cutting the 39 inch 1x6's so that the ends are angled a bit. So the diagram has all of the corresponding distances marked. I should be able to mark these off and then just cut straight lines to make the corresponding angles on either end of the board. So I measured out the board as shown in the diagram and I marked lines where I need to cut. And I found this type of square was helpful for making the measurements and drawing the lines. I should be able to now use my miter saw, pivot it to the correct angles, and cut along those lines. So you can see here I've got the board cut to shape. Now this edge didn't cut quite as cleanly as I would have liked. I think it's because the blade that I'm using is a little on the dull side, but otherwise everything came out okay. So what I'm going to do now is trace this pattern on the other board and then cut that one. Step two was to cut board B to length. Now I've already cut all the boards to length, so step two is done. Step three involves attaching board B, which is the seat trim, to the two board A's, which are the seat braces as shown in figure two. So I don't have a very elaborate workbench set up here for woodworking or anything like that. So in order to sort of help myself, I've got my workmate bench up against the wall and I've got the two seat braces pushed up against the wall so that I can use the wall to hold the boards while I nail this one in place. Now some sort of a power nailer would be the best thing to use in this situation, but I don't have such a tool. So I'm going to have to nail these things in by hand using a regular hammer. So I'll need the wall to sort of help me hold the board from moving as I nail things together. Because I don't have a power nailer, I'm going to pre-start these nails first so that just the tips of them are sticking out a little bit so that when I put them on the seat braces, they'll sort of stick to the seat braces a little bit and that'll help me keep them from moving when I nail them into place. So I've got all six nails in place and ready to go. The one that's up here, as you can see, there was sort of a knot there and the end of the board started to crack a little bit because of the knot. I think it'll be okay. I'll just have to keep an eye on that. And again, you can kind of see that I've left the nails protrude a little bit so that I can 
stick them in and sort of line things up here and it'll help hold the board in place while I try and nail it. Now the other thing you may notice is I'm using the other seat brates here to kind of help hold the board and keep it square to the other end. So what I'm going to do now that I've got this sort of lined up is I'm going to put the middle nail in and then I can pivot things around and line up the top and bottom. So as you can see there, everything's in place and I'm ready to go on to the next step. Step four is to cut the two C boards or seat sides, which of course I've already done. So now I'm on to step five, which involves assembling the two seat boards to the frame that I just nailed together. As you can see here in figure three, the seat sides need to attach to the frame that's already been nailed together. And that's achieved by drilling a hole through the C board and the side of the A board and attaching two of the two inch carriage bolts to hold everything together. I've got the two C boards here and you may be able to see that I've drawn a line across the board six inches from the top as indicated in the instructions. So what I should be able to do now is use these clamps to clamp these to the side of the frame and then get everything lined up and then I should be able to drill a hole through the assembly. So as you can see here, I've got everything sort of clamped together and sort of braced up and obviously I'm working on the floor now. I didn't have enough room on my workbench there to kind of get everything spread out and level. Uh, but I think I've got everything uh, kind of ready to go. Like I said, what I'm going to do now is drill a hole through the side here for the carriage bolt. So you can see here I've got the first hole drilled and I'm going to install this carriage bolt here like that and then I'll put the nut and washer on the other side and then I'll just sort of tighten this up as best as I can by hand and then I'm going to remove the clamp and drill the second hole for the second carriage bolt which wants to be right about where the end of the clamp is. And you can see here I've got the second hole in place so now I'll just put the second carriage bolt in. Okay so now I'll repeat this process on the other side. As you can see here, I've backed up a step and I've got the seat trim, board B, taken off again. Now the nails that I used originally were these little finish nails that were one and a quarter inch long. I figured they were too small. Uh, what I happen to have here in the house were a box of 4D one and a half inch nails. So these are a little bigger than the, uh, the recommendations in the instructions, but I think they're going to hold this together much better than these little finish nails. These just aren't, you know, big enough for this job. Now that I've got the right nails in place and the chair is a little bit sturdier now, um, I can move on to steps six and seven. Now step six, of course, is already done. That is cutting the seat slats or boards D to length. So now I'll go on to step seven, which involves attaching the seat slats to the chair. And in particular, step seven deals with installing the first slat towards the front of the chair. So you can see here I've got the first slat just placed up here on the chair, roughly how it'll be positioned. Now in the instructions it says that it would be a good idea to round over this edge, and I agree. So I've got this router set up to do the round over on the edge of this. I'm just using a quarter inch round over bit with, um, with a guide. So I've got the first seat slat mounted. I still need to pound the nails the rest of the way in, uh, but it's, it's on here. And I've got the proper overhang, an inch and three eighths, measured on both sides, so this should be uh, good to go. So now what I'll do is work on putting the rest of the seat slats down the back of the seat there. I've got all of the seat slats attached now with three eighths inch gaps between each of the slats, except for the last two here where I left a two inch gap. So I learned a few things while installing the seat slats. The first was that in order to maintain the 3 8 inch gap, I used one of my carriage bolts here as sort of a spacer to help me, you know, measure the guide and keep that fairly even throughout. Another thing I learned was that I needed to square everything up before I started attaching the seat slats. 
Uh, I got the first couple on and I found out that things were not quite square and it was going together kind of crooked. So I had to pop the first couple off, square it back up with uh, the framing square, and then I was able to nail them all down and, and keep it fairly square. It's not perfect, but the lumber itself really isn't perfect either, so it's, it's close enough. Another thing I noticed was that this top board had a very sharp edge on it compared to the second board, uh, once I had the second board installed. Um, so what I ended up doing was I ended up pulling this board off also and I rounded off this edge just like I did to the front edge just to kind of keep this a little bit softer and smoother so that it isn't a pinch point when uh, somebody sits on this. Attaching the seat slats took care of steps 6, 7, and 8 and figure 4. So we're now at this stage. So the next step is to go on to steps 9, 10, 11, and 12 which are cutting all of the various backboards to length, which of course I've already done. So the next two steps will be steps 13 and 14, and that involves building the back as shown in figure 5 over here, if I can get the shadow out of the way. So I'm working on laying out the seat back. Now I've got the two H boards down on the work surface first, and then I took this E board over here and got it squared up to the H board using the framing square here. And once it was good and square, I put in one screw, double checked the squareness, and then put the second screw in to keep it from moving. And then I had a nice square corner. So then I did the same thing with the other side over there. Got the screws in, got it squared up. Now these screws aren't completely sunk in yet, I've just got them still a little bit proud right now. Um, but then once I had the bottom set, then I went to the top, remeasured out the 22 and a half inch distance, that is the gap between the inner surface of this board and this surface of this board. So I laid out that 22 and a half inch, then I used the framing square to make sure that this corner was square, and then I put in a screw here and then repeated the process on the other side. So now that I've got a nice square frame to work with, I can just lay out the rest of the boards, get them kind of lined up evenly, and then screw them down, and the seat back should be done. As you can see, I've got the seat back uh, all assembled here and ready to go. A couple of things that I learned while I was assembling this. The instructions say to space the boards about a half inch apart, uh, which works here, but it leaves a little bit of an uneven gap here. So. I think it actually looks okay with a little bit of an une uneven gap here to the larger board. It's fine. It's a problem that I had with this is that the ends of these boards started to split when I put a couple of the first screws in. You may be able to see this one is still a little bit split. This one over here, I ended up filling it up with glue. I'm just waiting for the glue to dry so that I can sand this down. The original hole was here, so I moved the screw over. What I ended up doing for a solution was, for the subsequent screws, most of the ones that are in here now, I ended up drilling a pilot hole first before putting the screw in. And that helps prevent the wood from cracking and splitting and that sort of thing. So another thing that I probably should have done and uh, I didn't do on here was I should have uh, done a better job lining the screws up and getting them in a nice even row, especially at the top. They're a little bit kind of... Uh, uneven. Um, you may not be able to see it in this camera shot, but once I get this assembled you'll probably see that the screws are not quite in line with each other. So it's been about a week since I last looked at the chair and when I last left off I had finished up screwing all the boards onto the back here so I'm ready to move on to the next step now. Now that I've got the back all assembled I'm now at steps 15 and 16 which involve cutting the arms to length and putting this angled shape into the arm rests. Figure 6 shows the cuts that need to be made to the arm pieces. Because the one cut on this board is too long to make with my miter saw, I'm going to use my circular saw. Now this circular saw is an older model, it's kind of heavy, it's all constructed of metal, which is good, it means it's nice and rugged, but it's not ideal for a project like this because it's so heavy. I think it might be easier to use one of the more modern, smaller circular saws that are available to make a cut like this, but this one will do the job. So here are the two arm boards with the proper angle cuts in them. 
And over here on the right is the 2x4 that's going to be used for the arm connector cut to length. Steps 17 and 18 involve cutting the arm connector to length and then cutting an angle into the board. I've already cut this 2x4 to the proper length, but now I need to rip this angle into the length of the board as shown here in figure 7. So I've got my trusty old Delta Rockwell table saw set up and ready to go. So I've got the angle measured out in the board as was shown in the diagram in the book. And I've also set up my saw blade to the 20 degree angle that was also specified in the book. So now I'll just rip this board using the table saw here. Um, this is a little bit of a tricky operation. I just want to make sure that I don't cut any fingers off. And of course this is an old table saw. It doesn't have any safety guards or anything like that on it. So I'll have to use uh, you know, an extra amount of precaution when cutting this board. Now that I have the arm connector cut, I'm going to tighten up those carriage bolts that are on either side of the supports over here, and I'm just going to use a 9 16 ratchet wrench to do that. So now I'm at step 20 that deals with the final assembly. It starts on this page and goes over to the next page. So here's the continuation of step 20 on the next page. So the idea here is to kind of get everything dry fit and at the correct angles and then start to assemble it. So as you can see here, I've got everything clamped and braced up. I've got C-clamps holding the arms to the arm support, as was shown in the instructions. Um, but then I didn't have a helper, so I used an old scrap piece of 2x6 to kind of help brace everything up. I got the arms around the back and kind of got everything set at sort of a tentative angle that I've just now screwed up because I touched it. Um, but I've got it sort of ready to go. So what I think I'll do next is put a couple of screws in the front of the arm supports and that'll help hold everything together at sort of the right angles. And then I can start working on attaching the back to the uh, arm brace here. So that should be good enough to hold the arms on and keep everything from falling apart. But because I've only got one screw in each side, I should still be able to pivot this if I need to make some fine tuning to the placement. But what I'll do next is I'll start working on putting screws into each one of these slats to hold the seat back to the arm support that's in the back. I've got all the screws attached through the back slats into the arm support. So now that I've taken care of steps 20 and 21, which was attaching the arms and back to the chair frame, so now it's time to look at step 22, which is to drill a hole through the back of the arms and the arm support and put the remaining carriage bolts in those locations. Okay. So I've adjusted these clamps and moved them out a little bit to make room for the holes that I want to drill. Uh, the other thing I did was I just rechecked everything and made sure it was square enough to where I wanted it, so now I should be able to drill these 3 8 holes here for the carriage bolts. Now that the holes are drilled, I can just drop these carriage bolts in place. Now I'll put the washer and the nut on the bottom side of the bolt. So I've got the carriage bolts on finger tight, and now I can remove the clamps so that I can make room for the wrench in order to tighten them. So I've now arrived at the last two steps, steps 23 and 24, and that involves cutting the arm braces. So figure 9 shows the dimensions for the arm brace. Now of course I've already cut them to length, uh, I'll just need to cut off that one shaded corner. So as you can see, I've got the seat braces cut and ready to go. I've also made some light marks on the arm here, just as a guide so that I can drill some pilot holes to mount the arm brace uh, sort of like this um, on the chair. 
So I've got the arm brace lined up and I'm going to drill just a couple of pilot holes here for the screws that I'm going to use to mount it. So I can free up my hand. I've just started these by hand. So that's got the arm brace in place. Now I'm going to put a couple of screws in the side here just to secure it from the side. Okay, so I've measured out and made some marks, but I'm going to drill a couple of pilot holes once again. Once again, I've started the screws by hand, and now I'll just finish up the job. Now I'll repeat the process on the other side. So as you can see there, I've got the second arm brace mounted. So aside from some sanding to break some of the sharp edges and a coat of paint or two on this, I'm pretty much done with it. So that's pretty much going to wrap up my first attempt at building an Adirondack chair. There were a few things I learned along the way, a few things I could have done different, um, but I think I'll build the second chair and uh, employ some of those things that I learned along the way in making this chair. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. Thanks for watching.